Oh, wow. Hello, welcome back to the letter. We're just going to keep on going with Marianne's story. Writing to the Ermengarde mansion in their price was an awkward affair. Not only am I worried about scuffing the expensive of the seats, but I'm also worried about getting in the middle of another couple's spat. With the tension thick in the air, I can feel them star starting, starting at each other any time. Nobody's saying anything. I'm going to tell Mr. Wright tells his if I leave to turn the damn radio off. And for a moment, I think that he might start. Glenn said he just stays quiet, and so do the rest of us. Oh, we have a dog now? Without fear any barking, that's... William, you won't know why. In the end, the sufferable silence stays. I've never been so glad to see a house. Stepping out of the car and up to the mansion meant the end of an uncomfortable ride, and I could finally take a deep breath of fresh air. And the beauty, the beauty of the place never fails to make me gaze in wonder over trying to see it as well. Mr. Wright moves towards the front door, keys in hand. I can already hear Mr. Wright plotting. All right, here, Hans. We're going to go in. But I want you to look around the place. Familiarize yourself with it. Know every nook and cranny. Every inch of the lot. Go and see where we can put that vineyard and the other things we talked about. We'll want to know where to station security as well, so go around the perimeter and figure it out. Scouts a property and circles a perimeter on foot. You do know this is 46 acres of land, sir. Hmm. Well, you are not driving a car over the grass. I guess kind of fair. Put those long, spidery legs of yours to good use. I didn't hire you to stand around and look intimidating. Go, mush. Someday I think that's how Johan's gonna even stand and tolerate the man. Or doesn't he just quit? Certainly the pay can't be that good. You and I are a bit put off by our mutual employer, and the only thing that keeps me from bailing is the fact that we've already signed a contract. At least I'll be working with them during the duration of the project. He works with them every day. Sometimes I think you hired me to make me suffer for your amusement. Someday I'd ask. I feel a bit bad for him. If it's any consolation, he'll be away from Mr. Wright, if only for a little while. Rail to enter the mansion after a bit of standing out there in the sun. This wretched, strange sunlight that is far too alien and rare. There had been bit of a problem with the missus not knowing which key was which. First item on the agenda will be the grand staircase. It seemed st sturdy during the open house, but a closer inspection might say otherwise. There are no obvious marks of damage, nor wear and tear, probably re threaded during renovations. Speaking on the ground carpet, the wood is perfectly installed, with the bark placed down to prevent cupping. The carpet itself could use a vacuum, though. The structural condition, from what I can see without actual dismantling the thing, look to be in good shape, and the handrails are supported, and support posts are firm. The work on it should be commended. Can't look much more into the rest of the foyer, however, because Mr. Wright starts to hurry us into checking the dining hall. So, what do you think? Certainly we can't turn this area into a garage. Oh, is this the area he wanted to... It's Jacobian architecture. I'd say these would be pilasters and not buttresses, but you never really know. They really liked mixing up these elements. You could say it was pretty avant-garde at the time. We might hit a support beam if we're not careful. Ooh. And in layman's terms? From what I see here, we could risk great damage to the house if we try to turn the dining hall into a garage. Man didn't look too pleased at this. There's a look at this point before he sighs and looks around the place with an air of defeat. When he moves to speak, I dread another unreasonable demand again. This will stay a dining hall then. But if I may have another request instead, oh. let me spruce the place up with some flowers, some plants or something. I feel so old and dead in here. Okay, yeah, that's kind of fair. That's hardly unreasonable. Daffodils are a must, I presume. The look that passes between the two of them, there's a genuine look of fondness there. This is the first time seeing such an exchange between the two of them. But anyone or to see them like this, there is little doubt that they would love each other. Of course. And I want a garden full of them. Now, if you excuse me, I'd like to look at the rest of the house. I'll just be around here downstairs, if anybody needs me. That leaves Miss Wright and I. Mrs. Wright and I. He's quite fond of them, you know. I can imagine. He looked terribly upset when we told him he can't have his garage. <laughs> I meant the daffodils. We always have a vase full of them in every house we own. 
somewhere. I'd like to think. They may be about his mother. He never talks about her. I don't even know her name. True, we don't really know much about Luke. He likes to flatter, claim that they remind him of me, but he's always loved the flowers, even before we married. Much like the piano, it didn't take him I didn't take him for a person who liked flowers. Epidels least of all. Looks like someone gonna find out a Mr. Right saves kittens from burning buildings. I'll go and snoop about upstairs. You go and do whatever it is that you have to do. Maybe we gonna have a choice here soon. Probably. And she goes without even asking if I need her here. I'm not saying to stare at the walls. Really, I don't need to do a thorough inspection of the building itself. It isn't really part of an interior designer's job. But the architect in me is committed to doing this half of every project. I'm going to make a living space that have both form and function. I also make sure that the entirety of it is safe for my clients. Since I'm already here, I roam around the dining room. want to check things off my punch list, if you will. But when it's time to move on, I hesitate. Mr. Wright said he would be somewhere around here on the ground floor, and I really didn't want to be alone with whiskey. I have to look through the place eventually, sure, but on the other hand, I can do it later when he's gone. I'll go upstairs first if I want to. <sighs> here we go. I just can't, I don't know if you know it, but yeah, I'm using a thing with a trackpad on because of this cast. It's e easier to use. Okay, where are we going? We're going to the first one we said. So Luke's on the first floors. Say Luke's on the first floor or the ground floor? I don't remember. That log what well, did say. Oh, okay, no, he's on the ground floor. Um, no, let's go to the first floor. I've already seen enough of this floor during the open house. Of course, I know that is just a convenient excuse. I just don't want to be in the same room as Whiskey anytime soon. I might as well go upstairs first. The banisters on the grand staircase landing are solid and are at a proper height any lower and they would be trouble. There's a small catch on the carpet though, as well as long as nobody tries to run down the stairs until it gets fixed and should she, uh, should she, things should be alright. In the same glass, art. Restored, no doubt, to the image of the last lady and lord of Ermengarde. Or it was supposed to be until Lady Charlotte's fiance was brutally murdered by a witch, a witch of all things, from what I've read. You think the historians of this place would be a lot more scrutinizing, filtering out stuff like that. I'm amazed they bothered with it instead of replacing it with some generic cookie cutter design. This entire piece alone would have cost roughly 500, even a million pounds. Lady Charlotte Armengard and her beloved. Looking at the mosaic, it's not too far stretch of the imagination to believe that the depicted image could be Mr. and Mrs. Wright. And think about it. So, the Mrs. of Ermengarde is probably what is haunting her. It can be easily assumed as such if one doesn't know the history of the mansion. Nearly a place like this should be protected by the government as a landmark. But what can I do about it? Ooh, this looks lovely. Walking into the east wing, I tried to go into the theater, but it's met with an obstacle. The obstacle that is locked doors. Two doors. Two, and both of them are locked. I'd be frustrated would be I'd be frustrated would be if I hadn't already snuck off while the rights were having their little business meeting with Miss Cooper before to take a peek. With that Mr. Wright. With what Mr. Wright wanted, we'd have to install a power projector, the type they use in cinemas, and a projection screen. These would have to be re-upholstered if they're going to, if there to be any comfortable, comfortable, and the walls will have to be covered in dark material, paint, wallpaper, and install wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. Well, yeah, all of all the rooms I could be jealous of, it's this one. I could just picture myself in there watching old kung fu flicks on a weekend-long marathon. I used to wonder what kind of movies Miss Wright would like. Rom coms, perhaps? As but not behind, I'd rather not think about it. In the middle of my notion and planning, I didn't realize that I'm not alone until I'm caught standing in front of a locked door like a fool. Were you meaning to go in there? I'm afraid we won't be able to open it up today. Oh well, I wanted to, but it's fine. I can still survey the rest of the place. Apologies, but a key was missing when they were handed over. They told us that they'd get right back to us with it. 
What? But aren't they supposed to hand over all the keys once property changes hands? That can be grounds to file a complaint. They were already kind enough to let us move in so early. There's no need to raise a fuss about it. Worst comes to worst, we can call for a locksmith. The air is heavy and somber when she grows quiet and glances out the window. Up towards the vast expanse that surrounded would be their home. Will be their home. Their home. Then she looks back and with a sigh and a bitter smile. Flowers. Yellow flowers. Daffodils, dandelions, and sunflowers in the sort all up front. Just a whole garden of them. They'll make the house look lovely, won't they? Of course. A garden is a wonderful addition to any home. As I say, those her eyes roam over me, scrutinizing and thoughtful. I draw back the shiver that threatens to run down my spine at being inspected so closely. Yes, it must be nice. We're still talking about the gardens, yes? Hmm, I mean not having to worry about what another person thinks of you. What do you mean by that? She lifts her hand and points to her wedding ring before it falls less loosely to her side. Sometimes I wonder what would have happened if I didn't marry Luke. There'll be no fights about walking closets or silly helipads. I could do with this place as my heart desires until there's nothing but content. Then again, I wouldn't have bought this place if it wasn't a gift for him. I probably wouldn't even be in Luxborn if it wasn't for him. Maybe I would have moved to London, Manchester, or Birmingham. I might have even left the country altogether. Hmm. France, Germany, Spain, Canada, Sweden, even America. The possibilities would have been endless. I don't know what to say to that. What is there to say? I'm sorry. I must sound so petty and ungrateful. I do love him. So very much, even if he can be a bit difficult at times. Oh no, hmm. not at all. I'm just confused why you're telling me this, of all people. Just a whim, I think. Just flights of fancy, that's all. Don't you ever think about one decision you've made in your life and wonder how much would change if you chose to do things differently? Oh, all the time. I try not to dwell on the past, ma'am. Yeah, if I could do things differently, I wouldn't have this cast. <laughs> the key word is try, of course, thinking of the past things that brings up too many ghosts. Memories of her. And I do wonder what would change if I said yes when she asked for me. If she'd still be with me. Oh, Joy, already another choice. Oh, wait. Okay. What are you decide on your own? You've, you must have been quite the pair. You know what? Yeah, why don't you decide on your own? Our worries were simple. Seems simple enough. What did that do, please? Let's go back. You didn't see any of that. You didn't see any of You're not seeing any of this. Shh. Not seeing any of this. You must have been quite the pair. You must have been quite the pair, Mrs. Wright. Ooh, that went up. Barb. Hannah Evans and Luke Roy taking Luxborn by storm. At least, that's what I've heard. <laughs> Think it's a giggle ever. And can I be blamed if I like the way her eyes crinkle and how she sounded when she laughed? Quite the celebrity couple, according to all the newspapers. But it wasn't always that way. Father certainly didn't approve of him at first. Why, he told me to stay away from him. Told me that I was too good for him. And you are. That's the usual overprotective dad speak, though. But of course, you know that. I don't. I was too busy to keep my grades up at boarding school to maintain my scholarship. Never mind the fact that I went to an all-girls boarding school, so father and dad never had any reason to fuss over boys trying to date his little girl. And what did you tell him? Considering you are Mrs. Wright now, you or the mister must have convinced him otherwise. Yes, well, I told him I was my own woman and I could decide who was deserving of me or not on my own. Thank you very much. That never stopped him from making sure Luke couldn't get anywhere near me without an escort and a guard anyway. Though he certainly wasn't that overprotective when I was dating Jack. Maybe your father considered this Jack a more capable man? I doubt it. Jacqueline was nowhere close to being any sort of a role model when we were in college. She was she... rebellious, reckless, and immature. She... Everything I wasn't. Ooh, think spicy. But she was quite the charming, stunning woman, and I think that made her quite likable. 
That takes me by surprise a lot more than the fact that Mr. Wright's father-in-law didn't like him. That much was to be expected. But this, I'm nothing against them because that's their thing, though the nuns and the priests would say otherwise. Although it wasn't she worried about the implications of rumors that would arisen about her dating another of the same sex, especially with someone of her social status. You look surprised, Marianne. The first thing anybody needs to know about me is that I go after what I want. And when it comes to who I love, it doesn't matter to me whether they're a man or a woman. So is she bi? Maybe? It's a nice enough sentiment. Still, the thought that this lovely lady before me had once been with another woman. I feel my cheeks heat up a bit and I panic, thinking they might be red enough for Miss Wright to notice. You can't tell though, a quick smile graces her lips. Legs, we called her, because of how often she was running about because of one thing or another. Climbing up walls and, what do they call it now? Parkour. And also because of her, well, legs. And you went after her? Not right away. When I first met her, I wanted nothing to do with her. She was so improper and uncouth. But I slowly realized that didn't mean she was a bad person. On the contrary, she did many a good thing and was always so nice to others. I found myself confused. I couldn't figure out if I wanted to be her or wanted to be with her. So I approached her, told her that I might have fancied her. And your father didn't mind? He must have thought it was my form of rebellion. But he never watched out for Jack as much as he watched out for Luke. If I didn't love my father so much, if he hadn't raised me right, I think I might have told him to bugger off. He's never been more attentive of me than when I started bringing home dates. I'm sure he loved you very much. <laughs> she laughs once more, a glow about her. I know she says with a small smile. I suppose I've taken too much of your time with my silly stories. You still have much to inspect. I still have most of this floor and I'll want a quick run-through of the ground floor again later. I shan't keep you from your work any longer, then. Just call me if you need anything. I'd like to look around myself. When she turns to leave, she glances back at me before disappearing into the foyer. I look out the window from where she's standing, and I move on. Alone with nothing but my thoughts and her. Finally! Some peace and quiet. Thought the old biddy would never leave. It's utter madness, this hearing things. I reckon it's a stress, though. I don't know what exactly I'm stressed about. If meeting Miss Wright has really thrown me for a loop, I'd be worried. If I'm developing some sort of psychosis or disorder, will I call a doctor? But hopefully it isn't that. Not right here, not, not right now. I mean, it could just be that personal talking cricket, the conscious, so to speak. I'm only noticing now, though if it is, it isn't very helpful. Pushing the dilemma of voices in my head aside, I go back to work. But I can barely make it a few steps before everything tilts and shifts. Generally, some of what I feel like I'm being thrown off my feet, and the rest of the world just follows. Though my feet stay firmly on the ground, and even if I stay mostly upright, I feel like I've been heaved and put off balance. I have to close my eyes in the hopes of pulling the sudden sense of vertigo away. But when I open them, oh wow! Well, I don't feel any less sick because of that sight that greets me. Oh my god. Blood dripped from the walls and the ceiling, pulling downwards and seeping into the curtains of the carpet. A wave of nausea, stronger than the last, hits me along with the overpowering stench of blood and gore. Wonder Bolt, the rational part of my head is telling me to flee, but I would have gladly done as I'd asked if only I didn't hear her. In here, Marianne. Come on. I have something to show you. Oh no. I could have ignored it, would have ignored it, if only I heard it in my head. I swear that this time it's coming from one of the rooms, much further in, into the study. And I feel compelled to pay attention, but you can't turn around and leave. Not when it's her. I don't even think as I follow the sound of her voice. Lorianne? Lovely Amanda Lorianne Lazaf... You know, I cannot pronounce that. pronounce that. She was my friend, the only one I had in St. Samson's. As a scholar, charity case in a school for privileged and prestigious young girls. 
snow down on me is they if they care to look at me or know their presence at all all except her oh stop your crying you know better than to listen to Maeve is that, that, that how you pronounce that why I gotta teach that butterface a lesson wait no less I don't want you getting into trouble with the sisters again relax it's not like I'm going to stomp her and her lackey's arse is flat like last time oh my gosh she does look like Hannah Holy crap. Come on, let's just go back to our dorm room. I don't want to be on my Tobler while you go get yourself punished. You'll be fine. Gip's there with you. The rain was there to, when I needed her through my highs and lows. Having her as a friend made being in a strange school away from my father all the more tolerable. She saw this poor, helpless girl who was kept down and shunned by everyone else. And being kind, the kind soul that she was, she rescued me. So brave, so beautiful. It was something else. I'll eat all the chocolates stashed away in your closet if you go. I can get Mar. Just don't go complaining to me if you get a tummy ache because of that. Well, you don't want to get detention on a weekend, do you? It's a Friday. We can go to town and have some karaoke. And we can have a go at druids and demons again. You're not going to miss that just because of Maeve, are you? Sometimes I question what I did to deserve a friend like her. In the darkness, co darkest corner of my mind, with tra where traitor slots locked, I thought she only felt sorry for me. Maybe she was just being good Samaritan, offering a helping hand. Perhaps I had been too selfish to return the favor. You have a point. I'll just kick her arse on Monday then. That's not what I mean! I know what you mean, Em. Wait, where are you going? You just told me you wouldn't cause trouble. I still have something to do. Don't worry, it's not like I'm going to burn down her dorm room or something criminal like that. I'm just going to talk to her. Maybe I'll make it so that her room smells like a dog's air biscuit. That'll make it an excellent weekend. I'll see you in a bit, Marion. Lots of tobblers. I guess when she told me that she loved me, I couldn't admit that I felt the same way. Not to her, not even to myself. It was wrong I was taught that way. Husband and wife, one man and woman. Unclean and pure, I prayed for her and I for our sin and self salvation. I wanted to apologize for disregarding her feelings so callously. It must have been like a slap to the face to her for her. The life had gotten in the way. Exams which were trivial in hindsight now it took top priority and I had to keep my grades up to keep my scholarship for my father. I told me this I'd apologize to her when those were over that I needed to focus first and not let anything distract me. It had been easy when she avoided me like the plague. She was upset, I get that. Oh god. Oh god. I thought I had the time to make things right, but... At seven in the morning, students found a fifth year dead. Assumed to have fallen from her dormitory window. They told us that it was an accident, that it was... That was the official statement. But I knew better. She was dead. Because of me. Maeve had a hook and I kicked the bucket, didn't she? Oh my god, what the f Ding dong, the witch is dead! She had the... she didn't say witch, though she didn't say witch, Lorraine. But at least Maeve had the courage to admit how she felt about me. I don't even know how long I've been stuck here in a trance. And the mayor, Lorraine, smiles at me. She's as beautiful as I remember her then. Ho oh, ho ho. I feel bile rise up in my throat as her clean image warps into how she looks like when they found her dead lying on the cold hard ground. Good Saint Infant, great wonder worker, nerdy affliction of mind and body, help me. I'm seeing things, hearing things. Am I going completely insane? Looking at her, but at her, I hope and pray that it's enough to will whatever this is to go away. Doesn't even mean the in my head that I can just leave. You, on the other hand, can't even look me in the eye. This isn't real. You're not. You're dead! I'm dead. Because of you. And you won't even look at me. Look at me. Don't you dare give me a choice. My breathing quick and so I can feel my heart being torn apart by her words. I'm so sorry, Lorraine. I... Look at me! 
I can't take it because she's right. It was my fault. The least I can do is look at what I've done. Lorraine, broken and bleeding, looks at me with such hate-filled eyes. And her natural smile stretches across her face and I can only see malice in it. She lunges as the mirror ripples around her form with glass parting like the water surface around her. She grips my shoulders and I can feel her nails digging deep, sharp even through the fabric of my clothes. There you are. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, I, hmm, hmm, joy. Okay, I got, I got, oh my god. Apologies spill through my lips as tears clap my vision. But I won't give in to this madness. With every bit of strength I have left, I struggle to get away from her. Fear grips and threatens to choke me. I endure, I escape, and without turning back, I stumble back out. In my panic, I don't even care to look where I'm going. With one hand to the wall, the study the answers hobble as fast as I can away from the study, away from that mirror. Freedom is bittersweet. I'm free from the madness it seems. Just running out of the hallway reveals it to be a pristine, in pristine condition. That means I've turned my back on Lorraine. Again, I have no plan to stop him. Not until I know I'm safe. And if that means walking back to Luxburn, as ridiculous as the idea is, then so be it. Suddenly, someone grabs hold of me, however. My ears zipping deep into my shoulder. My heart nearly stops. My body sees that I nearly scream. Ma Marianne! You look awful! I, I mean, not awful, but... Did something happen? Are you all right? No, well, something did happen. M this is right. I, I. Oh. Without thinking, I sought comfort, seeing that it wasn't her. It's a sudden, impulsive thing to do, and had I been in a better condition, I wouldn't have even dared doing such a thing. I didn't know what else to do. Though I know I shouldn't, her warmth, her sense, they grounded me. It is intoxicating. Marianne, what's going on? You're shaking like a leaf. Tremors run through my body as soon as my mind realizes I am no longer in danger. I wanted to cry, scream about what I had seen, but like a scared child, I couldn't control myself. My mind couldn't reconcile with what I had seen. I should just write it off as a figment of my imagination, yet I still can't feel her. Can still feel her nails cutting into Are my skin. Are you sick? Should I call for a doctor? Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Wright. Just feeling a little woozy and lightheaded is all. Let's get you somewhere to sit down then. Come on, don't worry, I have you. A lie. But a whole lot less complicated than telling her I was attacked by a dead girl. With the feeling of ease. When the feeling of fear eases off, I feel nothing but shame for my actions. <clears throat> and quickly back away as I clear my throat and not my things. I think I've had enough looking around. Hmm. If it's all right with you and Mr. Wright. I'll meet you outside. If you're sure, I'll have the car started. Do you need assistance heading downstairs? I'm all right, ma'am. Just go on ahead and I'll be right there. I seem to placate her worries, though only for a brief second. Before she is done, I don't miss the concerned gaze she shoots my way, hidden quickly under her another smile. I won't begrudge her for it, that worry. The look on my face must have been a strange enough sight in its own. Even I'm still reeling from from whatever that was. Her voice still whispers in my ear. But for all these years, she's still... Oh, Marianne. Shaking my head at the thoughts, I drag in deep in a breath that... Then follow shortly after Miss Wright. Whatever has happened in the past is long gone. Only memories now. And those are the things I can no longer bring back. And that's where I will end this video of the letter. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, then... Subscribe. This was crazy episode part for the game for this. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe if you're new. Check out other stuff I've done, and see you. Hope to see you next time. Bye bye.